Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Planecraft modded server here playing all the mods 3, and I am your host for this evening, or day, or whatever time it may be, Big Mantis, and we are in our power room because today we want to get started on our nighttime power generation, well, our full-time power generation, and I will warn you right now that the mod we are getting into is worse than doing a redstone video. <laughs> this is going to be complicated. I've done a bunch of research on this. And uh, for now, I'm just going to get some basics set up, do some uh, some power output here, because I think we're going to need it. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what we're getting into, but I do know we are going to need to make some, yeah, some charcoal. Look at the speed of this bad boy. Oh, I love this ultimate furnace. But there's a couple of machines here we're going to need, because we're going to make ourselves a uh, fission reactor from nuclear craft. And I do know that one of the things you need is some uh, reactor casings, which makes uh, you need tough alloy and basic plating, neither of which can we do at this point in time. We need lead and graphite. So there's two graphites, there's extreme reactors and nuclear craft. Extreme reactors, you need a manufactory, and uh, it just takes pulverized coal. Wait, I thought that was charcoal. Did I get that wrong? Yeah. Yeah, I got that wrong. Shoot. Hmm. Anyway, and then we need this uh, tough alloy, which takes ferroboron alloy and lithium dust. So in order to do this, you need uh, steel dust or steel and boron in an alloy furnace. So the alloy furnace is over here. More basic plating, uh, brick, you know, basic stuff. Let's grab some of this. Then we're going to fly over to our uh, environmental tech area where Bruce is working right now on some solar panels. He's doing daytime power. I'm doing nighttime power at the same time. Let's see. We need to grab ourselves a couple of these ores that this mod uses. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we need boron, which might be this one. Yep. And we need lithium. 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 I can't remember what lithium looks like. Uh, da, 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 this one. Hmm. Magnesium. Lithium. All right. We're going to start with this manufactory. Wah, whip this up real quick. I can tell you this is going to be a doozy. I'm already getting a little uh, sidetracked here. Let's, uh, well, not sidetracked, but so much uh, trying to figure out how to go, where, what, what I need for what. Oh, man, trying to talk to you guys about it while I'm trying to figure it out. Like I said, I've done a lot of research, but this is the most complicated mod I've ever gotten into. But we made ourselves, you saw, we just had copper and iron, made ourselves a little copper solenoid. And that's the last bit of ingredient for the manufactory. So we can stick this bad boy up. Industrialize and check me out. Now this is going to be a bit of a mess at first while I figure out uh, exactly what I need to do. Ooh, is there speed upgrades for this? Oh, nice. Nice, okay. So I wonder what they take. Oh, pff, easy. Let's go ahead and throw this in here and see what happens. Nothing happens. Oh, you gotta power <laughs> you gotta power it. Let's put in some of this coal. Ooh. Alright, let me make some speed upgrades. Wait, I crafted up a stack of these speed upgrades. Wow, the whole stack goes in there. That is awesome. But if you look, I just read these. This takes twenty RF per tick. It says that the uh the speed will increase linearly and the power usage will increase quadratically and uh, 20 RF per tick uh, 42,900 RF per tick holy crap this better be fast I'm gonna drop the thorium in here and see what happens oh yeah that's fast Where, wait I didn't get anything did I what what put this in there I can't give it enough power okay let's take some of these speed upgrades out of there Holy crap. Let's do this. Alright, that's pretty fast. Let's keep going. Yep, we're running out. What? what? Come on. There it goes. Put some more in there, see what happens. Come on, there we go. Now we're talking. How many can I put in here before it starts taking a hurting? Staying full. 
All right, let's drop this thorium in there. See what happens with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's drop that out of there. We're going to throw in some of this coal because that's where we get the graphite dust from. Back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure that one out. Oi. So now that we have this, like I said, our, our first goal is just to get the stuff we need to make these two things. So we have boron. We have steel growing in our garden. We're getting the boron from our... Uh, our environmental tech area and then we need the graphite and the lead so I believe that is everything you need yep that's all you need for this al uh, reactor casing so we need to whip ourselves wait yeah alloy f alloy furnace is our next thing so let me grab that stuff make our first basic plating here oh this crafting glitch in this system come yeah, on Bam, put these in here, and we'll have ourselves an alloy. I was going to say, we're having some serious lag issues right now. Oh, I think it's just these guys messing around. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, in order to make the tough alloy, the ferroboron, steel, and boron. We've got boron right over here. Let's go ahead and put that in our manufacturing and get that crushing down. Grab ourselves some steel. So we grab this. Oh, we get two per... Oh, we get... Nice. Okay. Stick that in there. Stick that in there. Stick those in there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to need a bunch more of these speed upgrades. I can tell you that already. Drop ourselves our ferroboron alloys in there. Some lithium dust. Bam! Tough alloy. Look at that. We are just plowing through this mod. Uh, it does give you two ingots per... Well, it probably does here, too. Yep. Two per, because they're using two, uh, two ingredients. I like that. So we should have a whole bunch of this tough alloy. We got a whole different, the whole extra stack of ferroboron alloy. This thing, while it's crushing down, gives you two stacks. Yeah, we're gonna have all kinds of surplus. Surprisingly enough, we have made some major strides towards getting this done already. Don't get me wrong, we have a long way to go, as far as I can tell. Uh, let me grab a bunch of these uh, reactor casings. I want to grab some of these before I run out. Boom, boom. Yeah, so a little transparent reactor casing so we can see through, at least on one side. That should be enough. Dang, nabbit. Is he invisible? All right, let's see. Grab the rest of these. Oh, yeah, see, I've been whipping up some more graphite. Uh, just getting some preparations done. Cooked up some sand cut us a hole let's see where is my super suit there it is we're going to drop some of these off i know many a lot more than this now what you want for these things if you don't know and from everything i can tell is a square uh shape of some sort or a rectangle rectangle of some shape shape because uh all rectangles are are all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares, or however that saying goes. I'm going to need a lot more of these. Holy crap. Yes, I'm making this thing super huge because, from what I can tell, it doesn't matter how big you make the casing. As long as... Wow, I cannot believe I'm out already. I'm going to have to make a bunch of these. Woo. So I was going to make a window on this side. So I want to at least... Uh, hmm. let's see yeah we'll at least frame it it's not gonna be the prettiest thing but I would like to be able to see what's going on inside of here Wow okay I'm gonna have to whip up a whole bunch more of these but I figure we would uh, make this thing centered to this back area uh, we gotta make a controller too let's see what's in a controller fission controller that's the old one that's the new one so we got to make two of these nuclear furnaces. Wow. Advanced plating. Oh, that's easy. Two of these furnaces, which we can also do. I can't even recognize. There's just so many foreign pictures here for me. I don't know what's what. Uh, let's see. Magnesium diboride alloy. That sounds interesting. That would be boron dust and magnesium. So that's not bad. So we can make, yeah, we can make these pretty easy. We can make all this stuff pretty easy. So I'm going to whip 
this bad boy out, our fission controller, a whole bunch more of these casings, the windows, and then, then the fun begins. We've got to f start making some reactor cells, which is easy, but we have to start figuring out these configurations, and I'll talk about that a little bit as we're making it, but we got... It's a major balance between cooling and and fuel, which all this stuff is fuel, and ugh, some of the stuff I can't even figure out how to make recipes for. It's it's insane. So it's going to be a lot of learning experience as we go along, but I do know some basics enough to get us going so we can put in some of these uh, Enderium coolers, which do a lot of cooling. So you've got... I know, I'm going to get into it a little bit now, but you got these uh, passive coolers that are always cooling as they're in there, but then you also have active coolers. You've got an active fluid cooler here to where you have to take the liquid form of these passive coolers. You have to, whatever process it takes to make it into a liquid, then you have to pipe it in through, uh, yeah, I think the buffer, and then you pipe it into your... Uh, your active fluid cooler and it there's a whole list of how much different it is when it's a an active cooler versus a passive cooler and it's so much better oh my god and just all these rules on where you place your uh, reactor cells and they they make so much power and then how close they are to each other uh, they create so much more power but so much more heat they make heat all the time then you have uh where's the boron you have uh these things that you have to stick in between, well, you don't have to, but you can stick them between your reactor cells, which increases the power and increases the heat and all these different rules like diamond that says must touch at least two active water coolers and one active quartz cooler. Tr trust me, I told you this is going to be bad. So instead of boring you any further, we'll touch on that a little bit as we go. Now that the frame is completely done, what we need to do is grab our controller that we just made. What did I just get? What does that say? Splitting the atom. Craft a fission controller. Woohoohoo! Uh, the trick is where to put this because there's a couple different things that you need to control out of here. That's your power output. Um, fuel input. Yeah, fuel input, power output, and you have to give it a redstone signal to control it. And you can control the, uh, the turning this thing off when it's uh, full of power and when it's um when it's too hot man i could not get that out i think i want it on this side and we can always move it later it may be a mistake i don't know but for now we'll take that out we'll put it there yeah now we should start getting some feedback yep we got a 13 by 8 by 14 fission reactor we have no fuel cells and we have nothing cooling it right now it'll say yep energy uh the power gen is zero heat gen is zero and now now for the fun part <laughs> i don't want to do this i also found a door in this pack so that was kind of cool when i was doing this before i was breaking it like i said i spent a very short amount of time just throwing some blocks at it in creative uh just to see because the information was terrible so we need to make some reactor cells, which is glass and tough alloys. Let's start with two. All right. Now, since we're making these reactor cells and they take fuel, oh, this fuel situation is going to be a disaster. So we do need more machines. We need uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, this one. So we need not a DK hastener. We need... Isotope separator? Yes. We need an isotope separator because the only way I can figure out how to start the fuel process is by separating ingots out. And it looks like we might be able to do regular uranium and thorium, both of which are not a problem for us. So let me go ahead and whip out an item, an isotope separator. I have a feeling it's going to be another one of these expensive RF machines down here. And uh, we got to start making some fuel because then you're going to get this. Uh, the most base fuel that I can find is this thorium uh, product where you combine nine of these into a TBU fuel. And that gives you 60 RF per tick. Uh, that 60 RF per tick number is very, uh, 
Very not true, because it all depends on your layout inside of there, how many reactor cells you have, how close they are to each other, how many uh, moderator blocks, the coolers, the... Bleh. Okay, so... Uh, but see, it's an 18 heat per tick. So you, ever, that, that third line there that says base heat gen, that's where you need all these coolers. And say you put uh, 10 of these in here, you would have 180 heat per tick, but... They would also multiply based on where your moderators are and how close the reactor cells are to each other. That's why we're going to start with these bad boys. These things, just the passive Enderium cooler, is a, will uh, dissipate 140 heat per tick. So, let me go ahead. Let's look at this Enderium cooler. All it is is steel and more of this tough alloy. I need to make a bunch more of this tough alloy. But I'm going to make us at least eight of these empty coolers. And I'm going to make us the isotope separator. There it is. Ooh, okay, so basic plating, a machine chassis we already saw when we did the uh, uh, the brain of the operation over here. We made one of those. So this is new, the electric motor. Oh, steel, gold, iron, and two of these copper solenoids. I do have to say that these machines are quite ugly, but it is what it is. Let's throw in some thorium in here that I crafted up over in the mechanism machines. So while that's making our fuel, we are going to go ahead and first things first, we're going to move this bad boy because I realize that that is not a good spot for it. Right here, that should work, except for I want to take these out. You'll see why I took out the extra block here in a minute. And uh, okay, let's grab real quick, let's do this. Rip. Now we just basically we turned our uh, whoops, I just made an entangler porter, so all my stuff is gone. We just made ourselves these uh, empty coolers and surrounded it by enderium, so now we have the enderium coolers. So this should say, yep, we got a complete thing and we have zero heat dissipation. So let's go in here real quick. Okay, come on. Oh, it's open. Good. I want to find out whether that door being open or not stops the, the, the system. But if you look at these, I don't know if I showed you, it says, must touch exactly three reactor casings at exactly one vertex. So we have one, two, three. That's why we're putting them in the corner. That's basically the only spot these things will work unless you can build some kind of weird shape. So we have four of those, four of those. We have eight of those in there now. Yep, see, it's still a, uh, a complete thing with the door open. That's kind of cool and scary. And we have negative 1120 heat per tick. So we're doing 1120 heat per tick dissipation. And now we have to, I've made a whole bunch of this. Uh, I've automated the manufacturing a little so that I could just put coal in here. The coal goes in, comes out as coal dust, goes back in, comes out as graphite. Yes, we got to cook it. So let's go ahead and cook it over here real quick. It'll be super quick. Boom, boom, boom. Hopefully they work the way we want them to. The way it should work, we have uh, we have zero R per tick right now. Then we want to put, huh, I, okay. Boom, now this should not change anything, I don't think, because we don't have any fuel, no. But if we take this depleted thorium, not depleted thorium, the thorium uh, dust stuff here, 232. And then we do this. Oh, boom. Now we have fuel. All right. So if we put some fuel in here, yep, it should go straight. Oh, yeah. See, look, now we're getting 60 RF per tick. And all we need to do to start generating that is to put this torch on there. And it'll start firing up. Look, bam. So we should be getting, yep, there we go. Energy stored. Let's go ahead and here. Now we're going to throw in a graphite. Oh, that bothers me. Why would that be spawnable? Now that's 70 RF per tick. Eh? See how that works? The moderator block. Now we're going to throw this in here. And we should be, I guess, at 140? I'm not 100% I'm not sure. 280. See, it starts multiplying weirdly. We drop that in there. We'll drop the whole stack in there. 
But see, now we're only at 988 heat per tick dissipation. So it's going to be a big game. <laughs> it's going to be a big game of placing things. I'm trying to figure out where, uh, where the best optimizing of this will be. And we need to get this thing up, you know, 10 million per tick would make me happy. <laughs> That's going to be impossible. We're going to have a big fuel production area over here. I guarantee it. I've already determined we're going to bring in a bunch of new uh, me mechanism machines and a little bit from uh, thermal expansion for uh, making all the things we need to work our way up through the fuel. Ah, we'll figure it out. I I'm just going to keep messing around with it. But as of right now, we're only making 280 RF per tick. We're already at 92,000. No, 900. We're almost at a million RF already? That can't be right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's 93 million. That's 1, 2, 3. Yeah, we're just about to hit a million. That is definitely going way faster. Yeah, we're at a thousand. Maybe we're at a thousand RF right now. I don't know. Maybe there's supposed to be a decimal point in there. I don't know. But for now, we're going to stick our uh, quantum entanglement porter there, and we're gonna do. We're gonna have to actually make another one because uh, these can only do two million RF per tick, and most of the ones that we have over at the ball are already full. So uh, I'm gonna say that is it. Oh man, we're also gonna have to get a, a, an extraction out of here. So we got to do redstone control extraction. Ugh. We don't have enough sides for all this, man. We might have to put that, tuck it up under here and do a pipe out, and then we'll do a redstone pipe in and try to figure out how to do all the controls, because uh, what happens is if you overheat this, uh, half your blocks will turn into some kind of weird liquid that burns you while you're trying to get rid of it, and you have to come back in and replace it. It does not explode, so it's not a big risk. But we need to get a bunch of these coolers made, try different things you know get the uh like the emerald coolers do 140 heat dissipation per tick uh, you just the it's 140 for the enderium but uh must touch at least one active moderator block and one reactor cell so it would have to be you know in between these two somehow i don't know speaking of which we could throw these down but ah, can't get in uh, it just makes me so nervous leaving this door open, like radiation's leaking out. <laughs> See, now we're at 320 RF per tick just by putting those moderator blocks in there. Ugh, alright. That is all we got for today, guys. I'm going to do a lot of behind-the-scenes tinkering with this thing, come up with some ideas, figure out how we're going to do some fuel processing, and we'll get that done. And I know that you can you make this uh, fusion... Is it just the fusion core? It must be, but that's for a fusion reactor, which seems totally different. I, I don't know. Some of the fuels you got to get through here. Ugh, what a mob. But we've got daytime, nighttime power going to complement our daytime power. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Check out all the other plankers. Uh, we'll try to do something a little more exciting next time. And uh, maybe in two episodes we'll work on some fuel generation and we can look at what we've done in here. But that's about it. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Adios!